Hi friends, welcome to the Fiber Nymph Dye Works channel. My name is Lisa, also known as Fiber Nymph, and today is Monday, December 18th, and it has been quite a long time since I did a regular podcast episode. I did send out a little check-in video, I think last week, just letting y'all know that I had not been eaten by zombies, hadn't fallen off the face of the earth. Uh, life has just had other plans for me other than what my plans were for the past month or so. And sometimes that happens and sometimes it's just easiest to not fight that. So that's where we're at right now. Um, I will catch you up a little bit more in detail here in a minute um, for those of you who are interested. But suffice it to say, a lot of time has passed, a lot of things have happened in that time. I'm not even going to pretend to be able to catch you up on absolutely everything today. Um, we're just going to touch on the things that I think are most relevant. And if there's anything else that I don't talk about, then you'll probably, if it's important, you'll hear about it in future episodes as we come to it. So, um, welcome if you are a new viewer. This is going to be a little bit of a different podcast just because it has been such a long time since I recorded. I don't usually, t I usually get two episodes out a month. That's my average. <laughs> this was just such a weird period. Um, but I'm glad you're here. And if you are a long term viewer, thank you so much for coming back and checking in. <sighs> Lots to talk about today. But as I said, I'm going to just fill you in a little bit on what was happening since I did touch on it very briefly in that little check-in video. If you're not interested in all of my crazy sagas, <laughs> um, feel free to jump ahead. There are show notes in the drop-down menu below with timestamps. You can jump straight to the crafting and not have to listen to the parts that you don't want to. But if you are interested in what's been going on in my life, stay tuned. <laughs> Hi. This is Lisa from the future, not that far into the future, but I finished recording the episode and started looking at it and realized, oh my gosh, I went on way too long explaining what's been going on and why I haven't been here. So I thought I would re-record this subject and keep it much, much shorter. Um, the short version of this is if you have been around for a while, you know that I, um, you might know, I have Crohn's disease, which I've had for over 25 years, and mostly it's been pretty mild. Um, never had huge flare-ups with it after I was originally diagnosed and treated, and I've never been on long-term treatment for it. So my daughter also has Crohn's, by the way, which you may have heard me mention far more frequently than my own because hers was much worse and she has been on medication since she was nine. That's beside the point for this. Anyway, um, late this summer, like August, I started having issues. Um, I started having a lot of flare-ups, like bad ones that I haven't had in decades. And so when I saw my PCP in September for a regular checkup, I was telling her about those. And she's like, yeah, we really need to get that looked at. So basically, that's what I've been in the middle of. Um, she hooked me up with a really good GI who um, is actually the same one my daughter sees. And when I originally made the appointment, they didn't have a new patient appointment until January, which was, I figured that would be the case. But then the week before Thanksgiving, I got a phone call saying they had an open appointment because of a cancellation. Did I want it? I'm like, absolutely. So the week before Thanksgiving, I was seeing this new GI. She scheduled like a bunch of tests. So like the week right after Thanksgiving, I was having a surprise colonoscopy, yay. <laughs> And the week after that, I had another test. Um, it confirmed, I yes, I do have active Crohn's, moderate in severity at this point. Um, needed to be on medication. So I'm on one new medication right now. And we're in the midst of trying to get everything set up for me to be able to go on another one, which there's more involved in that. And that's, I'm kind of in the middle of that. And that probably will not be something that I can do until January at the earliest at this point which is fine. But anyway, that's what's been going on. And honestly, it was just a whole lot of unexpected, you know, running to doctor's visits, running to for tests, going to the hospital, doing the couple of days that it takes to do, you know, colonoscopies aren't super fun. <laughs> just from the standpoint, you have a whole day of prep and then the test and then you feel, ugh. 
and everything because you're tired. Um, so it's just been a lot of time away from home and away from the studio. And even when I'm here with a lot of that going on, you know, if I'm not working, um, which at that point, like my top priority had to be like getting anything that was pre-ordered out and club stuff out. If somebody's paid for something, that's always my top priority is getting that out first. Um, which means like I did not have time to do a lot of stuff that I wanted to do just for the shop in general. Um, but also like by the end of the day, a lot of times I was just exhausted, you know, dealing with a lot of that unexpected rather unexpectedly at that point was just, you know, it was kind of mentally exhausting. And so, you know, it just took a lot out of me. And so I just, I never had the energy to do podcasts or record um, when I may have actually had a little bit of time to do it. And the other thing was I may have had time to record, but I wasn't going to have time to edit. And I did actually record, I think twice, whole episodes and then didn't have time to edit them. And then by the time I did have time to edit them, they seemed so old and pointless. It was like, never mind. So that's why you haven't heard from me. Um, hopefully things are on the upswing and will be better. And hopefully I will be able to get some episodes out on a more regular basis at this point. But anyway, that is the condensed version of what I originally recorded. So I'm going to just pop this in where I had that. And hopefully it will all make sense. If it doesn't seem quite seamless, you'll understand why. <laughs> so... Thank you for your understanding. That's where I've been. I hope things have been going much better for you. <laughs> and uh, maybe you're um, not struggling. And I know, actually, I know for sure that some of you have had some things going on in your life that have not been great. And I um, I think about you and I, I feel bad for you and not bad. Like, I feel so bad for you. That's not what I mean. Like, my heart goes out to you. And um, I just always try to be thankful and send out that energy to other people who need it, even if I am dealing with my own stuff. Um, so anyway, that's my little catch up. And now we're going to get into the actual meat of the podcast that doesn't have to do with all of my weird medical shenanigans. So um, I have some crafting. I'm not going to try to tell you about all the crafting again, because there's way too much other stuff will come up over the next weeks and months that I can share with you based on that. We're going to keep it simple today. Um, I do have the final, the November soy mal winners to announce, which I feel bad that it's taken this long, but here we are. Um, I have some brief shop news, including one last new colorway that's going to be coming out this year. Um, so I will share that with you. And I do, I just said, I'm going to be making a video talking about the 2024 um, project pool make along that we're going to be doing all next year. Starts in January, ends in December. So that video will be coming. Um, I already have the, um, there's three threads up in the Ravel, in the Fiber Nymph Dye Works Ravelry group for that. Um, there's a general, general like guidelines and chatter thread that we'll use all year. That's up. Um, there's a project pool planning thread if you would like to do your planning in there, kind of like we did this past year with the Soy Mal. Um, you can do that. That's for your own benefit. And then there's a finished objects thread, which I'll unlock come January once you start finishing things. So you can see all that there. Um, by the time this video goes up, I will also have all that information in a blog post in the Fiber Nymph Dye Works group or website. So you can find that there. That'll all be linked below. Um, and the only other video that I hope I'll be able to make, um, and it, my, my goal is to make it right before the new year. It may be right after the new year. We'll see how it goes. But I would like to do um, kind of my recap um, video that I tend to do every year where I um, kind of just revisit how my crafting year went um, and look ahead to the new year and what I hope to work on and accomplish. Um, yeah, so that that I will definitely do. I just I'm not sure when I'll be able to get it done. Hopefully before the end of the year, um, but we'll do the best we can. So, all right, let's get into the crafting. So, um, the, I have one, one finished object to show you. I know I finished other things, but again, 
like some of it I don't think was even things that I showed you and I think they were so small that it probably doesn't even warrant talking about but these you have seen before and these were my Luna Moth socks so Luna Moth was the um, September I believe the September colorway for the Lepidoptera yarn and fiber club that I did this year and so um, I made these shorty socks in September um, this was my traveler base so this is my sport weight base and just my usual um, knit to pearl one patterning that I like to do for socks these are shorties, but they're a little longer in the cuff than my usual shorties, but I wanted to get a whole um, pattern repeat in. And I had to get creative <laughs> at the toes on the second one. This was the first sock, and this one, um, you'll see that there's some differences there at the end, because I was working with a shorty sock set, and the shorty sock sets come with two minis, and I thought, oh, I should have enough yarn, but because I made the cuffs a little longer, I didn't quite have enough. Um, so I had to piece some things together here at the end and then I had to use more of this mini for this stripe, but nobody's gonna see that. It's gonna be in my shoe or in my slipper when I'm wearing it. So anyway, I'm really happy with these. Um, and I knit sport weight socks on US 1.5, so that works best for me, over 54 stitches. So that is my finished object that I have to show you for all of this time. Um, another project that you have seen, and I have not been working on it actively in the last few weeks, but I'm going to show it to you just because I have made progress on it since the last time you saw it, and that is my Ariana cardigan. So this is a crochet project, and you've seen the blocks. Here's one of the half blocks um, that you need. Now, I believe the last time we talked, um, I said I was going to need to order more yarn because I decided to change up my color scheme. So here, I'm just going to show you this. Oh, shoot. I just dropped my crochet hook. I'll have to pick that up. Anyway, so here are my blocks. This is what they look like. And originally, I was going to do these five colors, and then my joining color was going to be a medium gray. But I was having sizing issues as well because this cardigan pattern, which is uh, the Ariana cardigan by Amy Christopher's, it is a crochet pattern, obviously. Um, it only comes in two sizes. There's the small and there's the large and there's a big inches gap between the two. I think the small is like 40 inches and the large is 60 some inches. It's meant to be worn with all kinds of crazy positive ease, which I don't want. Um, so I was working on getting this size down and I realized that if I just eliminated that sixth color for the last round and the joining, that that would make my, my squares a better size to be able to use the directions for the larger size, but make it smaller. So that's what I'm doing. So instead of that dark, or that medium gray, I'm using my blue for my last round. That's just my last round, not doing a sixth round. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm joining it with that as well. Now, as you can see, I started piecing this together. I have basically decided to ignore the directions at this point. And I know if you've been watching me for a long time, you're shocked, utterly shocked that I'm doing that. But, um, I'm not going to be putting this together the way it calls for. And I may have mentioned this last time too, because I'm getting a little hint of deja vu, but the way it was being put together, it was almost like it was going to be kind of a dolman kind of thing here. And there was all this wing fabric that in a crocheted fabric was just going to feel so bulky, even though this is a sport weight yarn, it's a very wooly yarn. This is Swan's Island classic Swan's Island sport. Sorry. Um, and it's a very wooly wool and I love it, um, but I didn't want all that extra fabric. So I am piecing this together in my own way. Um, I think this is not, that's not my underarm. That's just a gap because I didn't, I don't have a square to put there yet. Um, so I had done, what had I done? I think I had done like 20, 22 squares. And then I decided I wanted to see what it was going to look like put together. So I just started kind of in the center of the back, putting them together. And I had to do some half squares, obviously. And it was fine, except 
as I got some of them together and I was able to measure how big they were going to be once the prescribed number was put together, it was going to be way too big. So I'm downsizing it and that is requiring me to finagle how they're going to go together. Um, I'm going to need a lot more of these half squares, which are triangles. <laughs> um, and then I think I'll also need some quarter triangles, which I think I did do some. Yeah, is this? Yeah, here's a couple of the little quarter ones. So um, that's basically, you know, the deal with that. Again, I have not been working on this recently because other projects are taking precedence at the moment. Um, but I'll get back to it. I did end up having to buy more yarn because when I decided that I was going to use the blue for my joining, I knew I wasn't going to have enough. So I did order more blue. I'm not going to be using the gray that I originally had. Um, and I think I may have purchased a couple extra skeins of some of these other colors that I, I think I was going to run short on. So I should have plenty of yarn for this project, plus some left over that isn't being used. But it's nice yarn and it won't go to waste. So that is that. I like it and I'm happy with it insofar as it's together. It's just, it's going to be a little bit of a longer project. However, I'll probably get back to it in January. And Carol, who does the Stitch in Time podcast, um, she's doing a couple of make-alongs next year as well. One of them is again going to be, I think she's calling it Smash the Stash for next year, which is fun. So it's just using stash yarns. But she's also going to be doing four different quarterly make-alongs centered around specific projects or types of projects. And I believe the January through March one is going to be garments, large garments. And whips are allowed as long as they are less than half done, which that would qualify. So I'm probably not going to touch that until January. And then that can be, you know, part of that. I love her, her knit alongs or her make alongs. I'm just so, so bad at keeping up with posting in the group, <laughs> but I'm, I'm always participating in spirit. <laughs> so anyway, maybe I'll be better about it next year. So that is my Ariana cardigan. Okay. Hey, I just realized I didn't tell you what I'm wearing. <laughs> this is, uh, this is that funky, um, granny stripes cardi that ended up just being a vest for me because it was not going to fit as a cardigan and I decided to just finish it off as a open fronted vest. Um, I will link the pattern that I was originally using in the show notes, but I think it was called like a good vintage cardi or something like that. Not the greatest pattern in the world, but I ended up with this really fun, colorful vest. So here's what that looks like. You've seen it before, but yeah, I just threw it on because it's sort of chilly out here. We're supposed to get 6 to 12 inches of snow between this afternoon and tomorrow morning. <laughs> Fun times. And then it's going to get warm later in the week because my mom and her husband are coming on Thursday and they'll be here over Christmas. <laughs> so my mom's so upset that the snow won't be here when she's here. Anyway, so I'm wearing this. And as you can see, we do have decorations. Like, well, I think I showed them in my little my little mini snippet video, but our tree is out there. And I actually do have a little tiny tree in here that's just sort of funky. And anyway, but I am wearing the most obnoxious Christmas ornament earrings or Christmas earrings ever. They're cats that look like a tree and dangly and weird. And they just make me so happy because they're so ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, all right. Let's get back to the crafting. Showed you Ariana. All right. Um, let's see. What did I... I've cast things on. And that's... Like I said, I'm not going to show you everything. But I will show you a couple. And this is going to be a Christmas gift from a grandson. You may recognize the yarn. <laughs> oh, and here's the snow coming. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah. You can't see it from here. But boy, I can. Wow. Okay. I don't know, maybe you can kind of see it in the reflection on the glass. Anyway, so this is um, Cascade 220 Superwash that, if you remember, I made my grandson a going to college 
blanket over the summer. Um, these are his college colors. Um, he's going to University of North... Oh gosh, he's in Charlotte. Gosh, what's the name of the, co the college? Anyway, you know what it is. <laughs> Put it in here. <laughs> Um, yeah, I had a ton of yarn left over from that project, so I decided he's getting a hat. This is the Sagamore Flyover Hat by Jennifer Lassonde, who is the host of the Down Cellar Studio podcast and who hosts the Pigskin Party um, Make Along, which is going on now, and that I'm a sponsor of. Anyway, as you can see, it's kind of like a broken rib up here in the body. Um, I don't want to stretch it too much just because I don't want it to come off the needles, but... There you go. So I think I have about another inch to go and then I'll do the decreases. The de I've made this hat before and the decreases happen really rapidly at the very top. And the last time I made it, I did do them um, too soon because I thought, oh, I don't want this to be super slouchy, but it won't be super, super slouchy because it does pull in at the top really fast. So anyway, that is um, a project that this is a Christmas gift for him. I'm really hoping to get to see him sometime over his holiday break. So I'm probably not going to put this in the mail to him. I'm going to hang on to it and hope that I get to see him and give it to him because I have something else for him as well. Um, but I'm going to toss a card and some gift cards in the mail to him in the meantime. But that is my Sagamore flyover hat for him. It's a nice pattern because it's easy and like you don't have to do a lot of thinking and so that was a really good project for me again during that time where I was just like mentally tired. <laughs> so okay so there is that. Um, I had plans to do a whole lot of fiber related holiday gifts, Christmas gifts. And again, that all went out the window. Um, but every year I do try to make my mom some dishcloths because she really likes her hand knit dishcloths. This year I decided to crochet them because I am on a corner to corner kick, which you're going to see here shortly. So this is some Knit Picks Dishy. And this is just a corner to corner crocheted dishcloth. This is also, I did one extra row on this one. I'm not sure how I did that, <laughs> but I did. So anyway, two dishcloths. And then I was working on these the other night when I was at my son's house because I had spent the night at his house because we were going early the next day. We were going to spend the day going to the museum, um, the Carnegie Museum in Oakland, in Pittsburgh. So it was kind of like just a bonding weekend with him. But anyway, I was he had gone to bed and I was still awake. And so I was working on the dishcloths and then I was watching stuff on YouTube. And I have mentioned Jennifer Dicker Dickerson, I think, um, from Fiber Flux before because I've done other patterns of hers. And she had put up a video for, I think it was called the Snowfall Runner. And it was all of these shapes like this, except in all white yarn, and then joined together at these tips um, to make this really pretty table runner. And so I'm like, oh, that's so pretty. I'd like to try that. So I just used the cotton yarn that I had on hand with me at the moment and made one. And I'm like, ah, this is so cute on here. These would make great coasters. So I made four of them <laughs> out of that same yarn um, and I'm gonna give them to my mom as coasters I mean she lives in Florida and these would be great for like outside on the table by the pool or whatever um, so yeah so she's getting these and two dishcloths I still have a little bit of yarn I need to weigh it to see if it's enough for a third dishcloth or maybe I'll make a couple more of these I don't know we'll see how it goes but those were some fun little projects that I was able to whip out basically in in a day, less than a day. So that's the one thing. Crochet goes so fast sometimes. It's just a lot of fun. All right, let me see where we're at. Okay, the other projects I'm going to show you right now. Um, well, actually, here, let me show you this because I did work on this this morning. This is just a sample, but it, it will be turned into a pair of socks for me eventually. Oh, my gosh. Can you hear that icy snow hitting my windows. I can hear it. I don't know if you'll be able to on the video, but wow. And of course, my husband's out 
running around doing errands. I hope he's careful. <laughs> so anyway, um, this is a sample of the new colorway that I told you is going to be in the shop before the end of the year. Um, I haven't decided exactly when. Watch your newsletters. If you're on my newsletter list, there'll be a newsletter going out. But here it is. It's called Midwinter. Um, and basically, I'm just going for those, you know, dark shadowy colors that you have throughout winter and then you still get that little bit of light um, you know the winter solstice is coming up this week I'm so excited I'm doing my big winter solstice dinner this year which I haven't done in several years but my mom and Roy are gonna be here they get here that day and Chris is gonna come up because he's always loved that meal and so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that this year um, I love the winter solstice and I love the midwinter period, like that time between then and going into like January. Like I just, it's such a magical time of year for me. Anyway, so that is what these colors represent. They're just, um, there's a dark gray, a shadowy blue, kind of a, mm, a grayish kind of, I call this bark. This is my bark color I like. It's not really brown. It's not, not tan, not gray. It's that blend and then a shadowy purple with then this um, light, a very light honey gold in there to represent that light that we're waiting to come back once we hit the winter solstice. So anyway, um, midwinter is going to be in the shop. Um, my last new colorway of 2023. So that's just something I was working on. The last two projects I have to show you are both holiday countdown projects. Um, so I want to give you the heads up just in case you don't want to see them depending on what you're doing. Although I figure at this point in December, if you're doing them, you're probably okay with seeing things. I don't know. The first one is a project that I'm doing with my um, a Middle Earth Winter colorways. Um, I kept one of the DK weight mini sets for myself um, and that's what I'm working on so you're gonna see that yarn so be aware if you're not up to date I don't have today's like I don't have day 18 worked into it but everything up to day 7 up through day 17 is in this project so I'm gonna be showing you that and the other project I'm doing is a spinning project using knit spin farms um, bat vent little bats now I bought the unboxed version of her bat vent this year, which means I just got two bags full of the 24 batlings. They were not in any particular order. I don't know what the story is that goes with them. Um, they were just sent that way so that I could look at them and, or you, whoever bought the unboxed version, you could look at them, you could put them together in whatever order you wanted. And so what I ended up doing um, was pairing them up. And I'll talk about, about that a little bit more when I show you my spinning. But I just want to let you know, if you are doing bat vent, you may see colors that you haven't gotten to yet, because I don't know what the actual order of bat vent was. So that's your warning. If you don't want to see one or either of these, then look at the um, show notes, find timestamps, and you can jump ahead where you need to. But I'm going to show these now and I'm going to start with the a Middle Earth Winter Project that I'm doing. And I am making a corner to corner Afghan blanket. Um, okay, so I can't do math <laughs> is basically the story with this because I want this to be big enough to go on our queen size bed. And I have never done a corner to corner blanket before. Um, this is my first attempt at it. I watched um, some videos to get the hang of how to do it did a little sample, a couple little samples, because I want this to be rectangular, not square. And then I didn't really know how to gauge how much yarn I was going to need. I know how much yarn I use in like knitted blankets, but crochet eats up way more yarn than knitting, right? So I knew I was going to need some extra yarn, so I ended up dying four skeins of my bona fide base, because I still had some bona fide downstairs in the studio. Um, in skein form. My my strong DK is what I had in the available for the countdown sets, um, but I don't have any of that in skeins. So they're both DK weight. I figured they would work together 
fine and they do so I dyed four extra skeins and I just did four semi-solid colors pooling semi-solids that were representative of colors that I know were in the countdown sets pretty regularly and that was fine um, but based on how much I've used and the fact that I'm almost to the halfway point of being done with the blanket um, size wise I know I'm going to need double what I started with <laughs> which means I either I, I'm either gonna have to dye myself an entire second set of the of the holiday countdown colors the middle earth winter colors or I'm gonna have to come up with other colors I don't want to just do random colors because I really love the story that I put together with the holiday countdown collections and I've heard from so many of you that you're so enjoying the little daily story bits that go along with this year's countdown sets thank you for that because that was one of the most fun things I have ever done when I've done holiday countdown collections so I'm so glad you're enjoying it but like each colorway has meaning with regard to the story right and so I don't want to just do this and then throw in other colors that have no meaning so I would either have to like come up with other Middle Earth related colorways that I could add in or something. I don't know. I have to decide what I'm going to do. Um, it would not be a hardship to just re-dye a whole other set to go with this, but I have to wait and see where I'm at once I've finally used up all the yarn. But I'm going to now show you the blanket as far as it is. So this is where it started. I have woven in no ends here. I'll show it to you this way. There's fewer ends flinging about. So I started with a semi-solid. So the four semi-solids I dyed were like a medium gray, a gold, a green, nope, a blue. I did the gray again for some reason. Okay, I'm showing this to you totally wrong. Here's the gray. This was day one. Gold, day two. Blue, day three. This was the gray again, day four, and then there was a green, this green. So those are my four semi-solids, the green, this light steel blue, gold, and the gray. And then the rest of them are the days. Um, do you want me to go through the days and tell you what they are? No, that's silly. I don't know that that's, good. well, okay. <laughs> this is entering Hobbiton. This is Sam Gamgee's garden. This is um, a woolly green scarf. This is, um, I don't remember exactly what I called it, but it was basically sitting in front of the fire in your hobbit hole. Um, this was along the withy window. So you're on an adventure through this whole thing. Um, this is flowers for goldberry or lilies for goldberry. I can't remember what I called it. Um, this is a quiet corner, which is at the Prancing Pony Inn. Um, and now, as you can also see as I'm going, I started out doing three rows of each color. So three rows of the semi-solid, three rows of the day, three rows, three rows, three rows. And then I started getting to the point where I wasn't able to get three rows. I could only get like two and most of a row. And I'm trying to not combine two yarns in the same row. Um, but I end up doing that like here. I think this was the first one I had to do that. I had to finish it using this one. Um, and then from there, I started doing just two rows. So, okay. Oh, that's, what did I just say? That was at the Prancing Pony Inn. This next one, what was that? Oh, this is the um, Weathering Hills. This one, I'm thinking, sorry. Oh, this was, um, nope, that's Rivendell. Oh, this is the last bridge. <laughs> I'm trying to think through my story. The last bridge, and then we had some gold. Um, this was the Trollshaws. This was entering Rivendell at night. This was um, the hall. 
I can't remember what the call, I, sorry, I'm having a blank, but like the hall in Rivendell where they tell stories and sing songs. Um, this is the Eagles. You know, the Eagles are coming, those Eagles. <laughs> um, what was next? This is the Anduin. This is um, a view from above up on top of the mountains. And then this is Holland, um, the area to the west of Moria. Um, and so this was yesterday's. And I did not do today's. <laughs> so anyway, although today's is inside Moria. So there's like, I'm just telling you basically what the theme of each of those were. There's more to the little stories that I was writing out. So I hope you're enjoying it if you did get those. But that was my, my story. So we're basically on a journey through Middle Earth. And so hopefully you can see why I don't want to just add random colors to this. Now I did think, well, I could maybe do variegated varieties of my... Um, Middle Earth imagined colorways that I've had out so far. There's been four that have been out to everybody. There's another two that just went out to the um, early access people, which were people who ordered the Middle Earth winter collections. Oh my gosh, excuse me, I have the hiccups all of a sudden. Um, and then I'll have two more going out to them in January. So that's like eight colorways. Plus there was the day 25 colorways. I could do, that's like nine colorways that I could do as little variegations on minis but that still leaves me a lot of yarn and obviously I'm gonna dye some more semi-solids I wish I would have done a brown whenever I did my first ones so I think I'll probably add a brown in there um, but anyway it's going along well it is right now my straight sides my you know perpendicular sides are 41 no, 47 inches long. Yeah, 47 inches long. I need them to be 68 inches before I then do about 10 inches of working it straight. And then I'll start doing the decreases for another 68 inches um, to give myself, I want a 68 by 78 inch rectangle for this blanket. This is gonna go on our bed our queen size bed in our room, replacing my granny stripes blanket that's in there now that has always been just a little too small. Um, that is gonna go out in our RV. I haven't told you about the RV yet. If you're a member of the channel, you did hear about the RV because I did a little video about it. Um, Bill bought an RV <laughs> a couple months ago and it will, you'll be hearing about it because I have some sewing projects related to that that I'll be doing over the winter probably. But yeah, um, we're going to send that, that smaller blanket out there because it's a full size bed out there and it'll fit better. So anyway, that's, that's my one project that I've been working on and I'm happy. I have been pretty much keeping up with it because it's so much fun. Um, uh, it's just not going as far as fast as I thought it was going to, because again, I had no point of reference for how to figure out how much yarn I was going to use. This is gonna be a monstrous project by the time it's done. And if I've estimated correctly, it's going to weigh just under four pounds. So it's gonna be like one of those weighted blankets, which is amazing because I love sleeping under heavy things. So anyway, all right, so that is that. Oh, and I'm doing that on an F hook, which seems to be working out well. Um, and I will put a link to the videos that I watched in case you're interested in those that helped me get started on that. Um, okay, then the other one is my Knit Spin Farm bat vent that I've been spinning. Now, the way I did that, I told you there's 24 bats that I got. Um, they were in no particular order. And so what I did was I wanted to do a two ply. And so optimally, I wanted to pair up the bats from the collection um, with each other the, in close in color. So I could do two bobbins um, that were sort of aligned color wise and then ply them together. Um, that worked for, mm, I can't remember. I wanna say, I don't know. I'm not even gonna try to remember the numbers at this point. I think I have it written in my project notes. But what I ended up with was 30 little baggies. I put these in bags 
nope, 15 little baggies because I had 15 bumps. Some of them I split in half because there weren't ones that they paired up with well. So in that case, I did just split them up. And I think I ended up with five of them that I ended up splitting maybe. So if there was five, that would be, what's 24 minus five? That doesn't make any sense either because that's an odd number. I don't know. Basically, I have 30 days worth of spinning. So I finished the first bobbin and this is how it looks. Obviously, you cannot see what's underneath, but I was taking pictures every day or two. And so I will try to insert a really quick little um, slide sort of thing right here so you can see the progression. Okay, and so this is the first 15 days. I am now working on the second 15 days, which again, the colors are pretty similar in alignment. So I'm, my hope is once I start to apply that together when it's done, that the colors will line up and it obviously won't be an exact match. It will be barber pulled, but hopefully they won't be too off. I'm trying to spin consistently. I was trying to keep track of weight um, of each of the little mini bumps to end up with the same amount of fiber on each bobbin but I gave up on that pretty quickly because I it wasn't going to be exact and I'll, I'll just do the best I can with it so anyway but I'm having fun with that and I've also kept up with that um, I had started my grab your flannel, flannel spinning project that I was telling you about a long time ago um, I did start that shortly before December started, but I have not touched it since I started doing this. So that's one of those projects that you'll see somewhere down the line, probably in January, because I fully intend to finish this in December. The little half bump days, the ones that I had to split in half, those go pretty quick. So sometimes I do more than one day in a day. Um, but then I also end up, obviously, I've been losing days here and there. So it all evens out. Um, okay, so I think that's everything I'm going to show you craft-wise. Um, the only thing I will address is my personal stash yarn challenge yarns. I never got to show you what I had for November. I had actually pulled it before I recorded my last episode in early November, but I knew I was not going to use the yarn. I just had no time and... I had no idea what I wanted to use. Um, I, I'm a little disappointed that I did not do better with my, my monthly challenge yarns this year. I mean, I did do, I don't, I don't remember. I'll have to look at that, you know, before I do that year roundup kind of video. I want to say maybe I finished at least four, maybe five. I, I don't know. Um, but it was not as successful a year as I had last year with this. And part of me thinks maybe it's just the fact that I sometimes I lose excitement once I've done something one time, you know. Um, and I, I think definitely this year, part of it also was that I was a little overzealous in the yarns that I chose for this year. Um, a lot of them had multiple skeins in them. And I don't know what I thought I was going to be doing with all these multiple skeins, but... Um, yeah, it just didn't work out and that's fine. Like, I don't feel bad, bad about it. I, I'm just a little disappointed that I didn't do a little bit better, but it's okay. And those yarns are still in my stash and I can still use them at some point. Um, I am not going to do that for the coming year though. I've already made that decision. Um, I'm going to give that a break. Maybe I'll come back to it another year. Um, but I'm mainly going to be doing my, um, my own personal motivation and inspiration um, by taking part in my 2024 make along which is going to be the project pool make along and I will talk about that in just a little bit that's going to take that place for me as I think that's that's my plan um but let's go to the stop shooting on yourself make along which ended at the end of November and I guess I feel like um 
it's been over way longer than it has been because it's just been so long since I recorded. <laughs> but um, I do have prize winners for November. And let me tell you what your prize is. If you are one of the three prize winners for November, um, I'm offering you the chance to get this new color. Oh gosh, that's a messy side of that ball. This new colorway, Midwinter. Um, you can win it before you can buy it. Um, so if you're interested in this, you can get it either as a self-striping, you can get it as a mini skein set, or you can get it as fiber, either as a braid, or I can do it as like a spinning set, each of the five colors. Um, I don't have samples of the fiber dyed up yet, um, but that will be coming. So anyway, if you are the winner, you can choose any one of those. If you absolutely hate this colorway and don't want it, um, and would rather have something else, just let me know and we will find something for you. Matter of fact, if you don't like this and you would like something different, I will do, um, a serendipity skein for you, either self-striping or variegated, um, whichever you prefer. And we'll do that the same way I've done other serendipity skeins. You tell me two colors you really like, one color you absolutely don't want, and what yarn base you want, and I'll, I'll do that. But this is the primary, the primary uh, prize. So if you like this, this is what you're going to get. Otherwise, your alternative is to choose to have a serendipity one, which I'll have to die up for you. So that will take a while. Definitely won't ship until January. So, okay. Let's get to the prize winners. So in the chatter thread, and I have to say thank you guys so much for everybody who participated this year. The chatter thread was amazing. Um, I had a hard time keeping up with it. I'm hoping to do better for next year. Um, but yeah, just thank you. It's, it's such a... Uh, our make-along threads are always such a great community, and I so appreciate that. Um, okay, so Chatter Thread, November posts were 5,166 through 5,610. Random number generator chose post number 5,388. That was Pepper RN, who is Pam, and she showed a picture of her beautiful offset cowl, which she used, uh, made using her 2022 holiday countdown set, the Art of Contrast one that I, I dyed last year. It turned out amazing. So congratulations, Pam, both on such a beautiful finished object and on being our last chatter winner for the year. Um, okay, moving along to finished objects. Um, there was post 481 through post 547 for the month of November and random number generator chose post 481, which was that first one, and that was Kristen 93, who is Kristen. So congratulations, Kristen. Kristen. Um, her project was a finished cobblestone cardigan for her son, and he looked quite handsome in it. So yay, congratulations. And lastly, um, we have our Instagram winner. Oh, Instagram has just been such a challenge for me this year since they changed the way things are. Anyway, I did my random scrolling with the hashtag until I found a post from November and it ended up being PA Nitwit, who is Sarah. Um, and she, of course, her post was of so gorgeous hand spun because she is the hand spun queen. She has spun up so much of her, her fiber this year. It's amazing. So congratulations, Sarah. So Pam and Kristen and Sarah, please Email me at lisa at fibernymphdyeworks.com. Let me know if you would like the midwinter colorway. And if you would like this, would you like it on self-striping or a mini skein set? And if you want the yarn, um, tell me what base. Like my normal bases like Bounce, Bedazzled, Mountain Tweed, Traveler, or um, Strong DK. Those are the options. Um, and I can do mini sets in all of those except Traveler. I can't do sport weight mini sets. So, or if you want fiber, let me know what fiber you would like it on. And if you want a braid or um, a spinning set. So <laughs> those are your options for that. And again, if this really does not float your boat as a colorway, let me know and we'll work out a serendipity skein or braid that I can do for you. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Yay. That was a lot of fun. Um, and I have 
taken, I haven't taken them down, like they're not closed. The threads are still there. The finished object thread is locked because you're not adding any more finished objects. Um, but the chatter thread and your list thread from this year are still open. Like they can be posted to if you want to, but if you want to use your list thread for something and maybe do some final notes for the year for yourself, you're welcome to do that. They're just not stickied at the top of the Fibernymph Dye Works group in Ravelry anymore. Um, in their place, there are the threads, however, that I mentioned for the 2024 Make Along, which is the Project Pool Make Along. And I realized that abbreviating that is going to be problematic. Cause I was trying to come up with a hashtag for it, like FDW PP mail. And immediately I said, absolutely not. I am not calling my make along the PP mail. We are just going to say the entire words this year. FDW project pool 23, I believe is the hashtag that I landed on. Um, yeah. Just not doing it. It was bad enough that if you said, said stop shooting on yourself fast enough and didn't enunciate well, it sounded like I was telling you to stop something elsing on yourself. So we're just not going there. I don't know what it is with me and project or make along names, but goodness gracious, that was just ridiculous. So anyway, let's talk about this real quick. Um, actually, I already talked about it. <laughs> I said the three threads are up. The whole idea of 2024's Make Along is the project pool. You're going to create a project pool, whether it's a physical like basket or bin or shelf or cubby or something where you can put in a manageable quantity. Like I would recommend between 10 and 20 items that can be yarn or fiber or patterns or project kits or whatever. It can be a mixture of multiple things. It doesn't have to all be the same type of project um, that you're going to pull from. Um, and these should be things that are going to excite you, motivate you, inspire you. You know, don't put in the yarn that you've had sitting on your shelf for 10 years and you don't even like. Don't throw that in because how, I mean, unless you really think that's going to inspire you, but like pull things that you know are going to be really inspiring for you to work with. We want to do the things that are going to bring us joy again, um, kind of carrying through that. Don't should on yourself. Like I should use that yarn. Like, oh, I really want to use this yarn for something, or I really want to make this project that I've been wanting to make for ages, that kind of thing. So let's keep it small. That's the, the main idea. That's why we're using a pool, not a, you know, ocean. <laughs> um, and again, if you don't want to use a physical space, that's why I started that thread. You can make a list. You can do both if you would like. But again, keep it manageable. And as you get things out of there and use them and finish them, you're welcome to add more. You're welcome to change things out throughout the year. Whatever works for you. Again, I'm going to do an entire video on this probably in a little while today. Um, maybe I'll change my clothes so you won't be able to tell that it's the same day. Except I've already told you. Anyway, um, yeah, I will do a, a better explanation, but just know that that information is up in the Ravelry group. It will also be up on the Fibernymph Dye Works blog. It'll be pinned up at the top like I do every year for the make-alongs. And I would just love for you to join in. Um, again, I always love our, um, our group of people, our community um, that takes part in our make-alongs. There will be prizes again next year. I'm going to do them every other month instead of every month. Um, but still, prizes, just because prizes are fun. Um, anyway, so that's what's going on there. And lastly, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the shop. Actually, not totally lastly. I think I have a couple of other things. But shop news real quick. Um, with all of the, again, with all the time I've been away from home for all this doctor's visits and all these things and running and then, you know, I just haven't been able to make December the December I wanted to in the shop for you guys. Um, my top priority is always getting things that have been pre-ordered out to people since they've already paid for them. So that's always going to be my top priority. So when I was in the studio, that's mostly what I've been working on. Um, I think I have almost absolutely everything. I think I have one pre-order, like a special order that somebody placed that I still have to ship out. It's a dyed. I just have to reskein it. Um, I don't. I don't 
think I have any. I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure if you've placed like a grab your flannel pruner or whatever, I'm pretty sure those are all out at this point. Um, but I'll double check. <laughs> Make sure you get it. Um, anyway, as I said, there will be this one last new colorway. Um, I don't know. It's going to be all dyed. There's going to be in stock, uh, an in stock limited quantity of it um, that should be done this week. Um, I don't know when I'm going to put it in the shop. I'll either have it in the shop midweek this week or like not first thing next week because that's Christmas. I'd like to get it out sooner rather than later. Sorry, I'm doing the thinking here, which is not when I should be doing this thinking. Just note that this isn't going to ship immediately, even though it is technically in stock, just because the holidays are coming up. My mom is going to be here for a week and I don't want to have to work while she's here other than to maybe ship out an order here and there because like if orders come in, I'll ship them if they're in stock items. But when she was here in September, I had to work almost constantly and I hate doing that when my mom's here. I want to enjoy that time with her because I don't get to see her very often. So I'm going to put these up. Since there's going to be only a limited quantity and there's probably not going to be in stock fiber, I am also going to have um, a die to order option in that listing and those will go out in early January. So you'll still have them to work on in those dark days of midwinter. That's the whole goal. So that's going to be up. Um, I am going to be doing a second installment of the Lepidoptera Yarn and Fiber Club, I've decided. Um, pre or, or sign-ups, not pre-orders. Sign-ups for that will happen in January, so watch your newsletter for that. If you were a member of the first round of this that just finished in November, um, you, have, you got a note in your last shipment saying that you can sign up ahead of time um, at the 2023 prices and with a little bit of a discount. You have till Wednesday to do that. Um, and then that offer goes bye-bye. So if you are thinking about that, if you're on the fence, you want to make that decision in the next couple of days. Um, I will be doing my annual end of year sale on New Year's Eve day and New Year's Day. Um, again, watch your newsletters for that. Um, and, you know, if you shop that, you always get a special little gift whenever I do those that year end sale. And it's one of my biggest sales, like discount wise too, that I do throughout the whole year. So, um, other than that, let's see life. I feel like I've talked so much. We're already probably at least over an hour in things. Um, what else? The holidays are coming up. Winter solstice is on Thursday. If you celebrate that or you will, I hope it's a joyful, fulfilling day for you. If you're celebrating Christmas, I hope that is all that you want it to be and that it's peaceful and joyful for you. Um, I know Hanukkah is already over. I hope that was a wonderful, um, joyful time for those of you who celebrated that. I know this year it was probably a very different um, for you than in past years considering what is going on in the world and I think about that a lot and I think about you. Um, so, you know, I'm there thinking about you, about that. My heart is there. Um, but anyway, whatever you celebrate coming up here in the winter, I hope it is good. And I hope it is what you want it to be. And if you don't celebrate anything and you just want to enjoy the calm and the quiet and the peace of the season, I hope you find that. And I know if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you know, the weather is very different than it's going to be here, but hopefully that is good for you as well. If that's everything. I would like to get this processed and out hopefully by tomorrow morning at the latest, but I apologize that this is as long as it is, and I apologize that it's been such a long break since I talked to you last. Hopefully the next video will be much sooner. Again, I'd like to get another video out by the end of the year. Um, so that we can wrap up 2023 and be ready to move into 2024 together. But I hope all is well with you and I will talk to you again as soon as possible. Take care, my friends. Bye.